Okay, time for another little issue to round off this episode. Pat, what are your thoughts about, as we end the year, Brexit, Boris Johnson, the SNP? Mm. Give us your insights. I think it's really conclusive, and I think Boris Johnson is the voice, and he's the leader of the new Conservative Party. The old group is gone. But this Scottish National Party got three-fourths or four-fifths of all the seats in Scotland. Nicola Sturgeon of the Scottish National Party, she's going to demand another referendum on Scotland leaving the United Kingdom if the United Kingdom leaves the EU, and Boris is going to deny her the referendum. But if Scotland wants out and comes, I mean, in that direction, they got 45% in the last referendum. I don't see how ultimately you deny them self-determination. Well, you deny them, someone might say, by saying you do not get to do it because you are not the sole inheritors of Scotland. Well, you know, but if 50 or 60% in a democratic world and all this talk of democracy, they say we want out. Pat, don't I you know democracy is only good when you, your side wins? No. <laughs> Okay, Eleanor. I've noticed that with Pat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, most most Pat. of his arguments end with his side winning. Um, <laughs> but I think there are lessons in the in the British election, and I think the the easy read is that you do, you don't want to uh, nominate somebody so far to the left who happens to also be unlikable. <laughs> that that's that's not going to bode well. Uh, but there's another message with Corbyn. He wasn't clear, and uh, Boris Johnson had uh, get it done a very simple message that he would get Brexit done. And Corbyn tried to appeal to anti-Brexers and pro-Brexers. Pro and the result was you had you know millions of people who hadn't voted Labor in 30 years uh, voted, voted for Johnson because they kind of understood what he was about and he was going to end the trauma that the country's uh, been through. So clarity is a message that Democrats here should uh, take away. But I also think it's it's... It's correct for Democrats to worry about uh, nominating somebody who is not an easy vote uh, for mm -hmm. a former Trump voter to cast their ballot for. Right, 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 right. Seth? Well, I think one of the principal reasons that we are here where we are today is because of what happened in the original referendum. Um, the rapid pace of news is, is so fervent that it tends to sweep other things under the rug. and. Let's not forget that uh, there are still ongoing investigations of Russia's online involvement as it related to this uh, referendum, uh, which is certainly not their only um, cybersecurity <laughs> Pat, issue. Pat, Pat is the Russians Pat. did this too? I know. It's really <laughs> shocking, isn't it? They're usually such They're good running actors. the whole Western <laughs> world. Well, so, I, I, I think that when you have um, a relatively close vote and you have bad actors, um, that ultimately gets swept under the rug, even if it's of a tangential effect, it, you really have to ask yourself, whatever happened to the doctrine of deterrence? There's really mm -hmm. very little impact. And even as the Skirpals were fighting for their lives and things continue to develop over there, there really seems to be very little fallout. So it's a, it's a, it's a fascinating story from the start of it all the way through to the present time. Yeah, I, I, on that deterrence thing, you know, what, if, if we take the principle that Russia is a threat, which Pat might push back against mm -hmm. a little bit, why do we continue to persist in saying, don't attack our election and we're going to try and do more safeguards? Why don't we shut down the GRU mainframes in the Kremlin, impose real costs on the Russians? That's Listen, what they respect. My belief is that we are, it's, we are not doing nothing. The United States, my guess is, is doing many of the things you're talking about. We've done them to Iran. I'm sure we told the Russians. We've done some things and we tell them, if you really want to be fouled up, Keep doing this stuff. You agree with that? Of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of but course. But my there? guess is we're doing it. But I don't want a second Cold War. Frankly, if we won the first, okay. it's over. All right. I, I just look at the United States Senate and, and what they've done in the big picture of that throughout the year. And I'm, I'm not trying to get away from the Brexit story. But if you even look at the vote in the Senate on how to treat Oleg Deripaska with regard to whether or not he was going to get a pass with regard to um, his investments and whether he was going to be subject to sanctions. It, it's kind of an easy ride. Um, I, I agree with Pat. I don't think that we continue to throw up the Russia flag and say it's all their fault, but just the light mm -hmm. lifting on that whole issue, I just find really fascinating. Okay, mm -hmm. Clarence, coming back to Brexit yeah. and, and 
you know, what, how, how do you see this? Is it a sort of pivotal moment, the, the rebirth of populism against the elites or something well, else? Well, I'm naturally seeing this through American eyes, and I know similarities between their politics and our, ours can sometimes be uncanny ever since the days of, of, uh, of uh, uh, Reagan and Thatcher. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, what we're seeing these days is uh, a, a resurgence of, of populism. Uh, since uh, we, we were, uh, like, like I mentioned before, we, we were arguing a, a year ago about uh, these uprisings around the planet, but uh, you were right, uh, Pat, in terms of, of the kind of fragmentation that has been going on. And, and I, th I think we're seeing a leadership crisis in, in the Western world uh, where we've got too many elections where people say, I don't like either one of them. Right. But you know, it's the, the driving force. It's, and like in Scotland, like in Catalonia, people are identifying themselves by, if you will, the tribe, the nationality, the race, the religion that they have and the neighbors do not have. In this, you know, we started the UN with 50 nations, there are now 193. Bougainville just seceded from Papua, you mm -hmm. know. And so, so there are more and more, of, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there are more and more people are identifying themselves by these factors, and they're different than the neighbors, and they're becoming dominant, and people want to yeah. be us, not them. No, mm -hmm. no, but, but in a world, particularly in the country we live in, which is more diverse every day, uh, you really can't have the kind of um, tribal impulses that you, you talk it. about that are going to be controlling and eliminate everyone. It's the us versus them. Uh, it, that, that's not embraced by, by young people in this country, not at all. But no, but, no, but this country is, is certainly much more divided and splintered than it has been almost in my lifetime. It's not violent. I, I disagree. We've always been a, 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 a what tribal country, really. But identity politics are American politics. It's only been really in the last half century that we have tried to equalize opportunity uh, for everybody across the board. But as much as we fight each other every so often, we live with re remarkable comfort in our with our own diversity here, and we are still a model for the world. I, I just hate to see us uh, fall into not being a model anymore where folks say, there you see, people can't get along after all. And it seems facetious, but we all have profound disagreements as well as our agreements on this panel. We get along. We are models of civility. Exactly. Here, we we are models of America, uh, <laughs> even with my accent. Some of what? us are secessionists. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One thing that, you know, Eleanor mentions the idea of younger Americans being predisposed against this, uh, you know, some of the narratives that Perhaps you're they preventing. celebrate diversity. There's no okay. doubt about it. But it is interesting in France, for example, where the, the National Front, the Front National, um, is actually supportive. Part of their base is younger uh, French but voters you know, because of country, unemployment. Right. Well, no, but France and these countries in Europe have never had the immigration experience of the United States, where you had the Irish in the 1840s yeah. and the, the Jewish folks and the Polish folks, Eastern European. 1890, and they all assimilated and Americanized. The problem for me is, it seems to me the melting pot start, stopped melting around 1960. You know, the melting and we got has many new, really many new between, groups. Look at the Electoral College. That's where the melting has stopped in terms of, uh, of the hostility between the right. coastal elites, quote unquote, right. and right. the heartland. Uh, the fact is, we are still all, all Americans here, and e even our fights mm -hmm. are kind of unique in that regard. Oh, right. I was just going to say, let's, we're talking about young voters. Let's also keep in mind um, how they get their news, uh, mm -hmm. how we all get our news, and especially the more technology uh, agile voters. Uh, it's even different than it was five years ago. They're probably on apps that we don't even really know much <laughs> about. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. Right. There's and that, the, that's to bring it around to what you were talking about before is the Russian influence. You know, <laughs> the <laughs> latest <laughs> Brexit election. Um, what, well, what kind of messaging did they get across? I, I don't think yeah. people really understand what the negatives and the positives are for them in they, supporting they or under, opposing Brexit. They do understand the British people up there in the Midlands and the North. We have Britain. It's a great country, historically great. We love the memories and history. We don't like what it's becoming. That's exactly the attitude. That's why they would give up their allegiance to labor and say, let's vote for the Tories this time. And isn't that, you know, to, to take Pat's point there, Eleanor, isn't there a risk if we, you know, suggest uh, that part of the reason people are making these decisions because we disagree with it is because they've somehow been, you know, manipulated or haven't read enough into it. I mean, we now have seen twice in the UK 
first the referendum, now this pretty resounding election result, mm -hmm. a clear vote for Brexit by a lot of people. Yeah, but I don't think that discounts some of the messages that they've been getting, which is basically the one that Pat makes. If you want London like it used to be without all these immigrants that take up city <laughs> services, uh, vote one way. I mean, I think they're, and I think the positive messages uh, get overwhelmed by the negative. But you, you saw off Londonistan and let it drift out into the English Channel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, but one yeah, thing but that's what they feel like. Look, you guys want that there. Fine, we want our country back. Mm. That's a phrase that resonates all over the world now. Pat, Pat, one thing here to maybe challenge your sort of understanding, that not your understanding, your perception of it, is if you look at some of the Hispanic American voters now, you know, surprisingly, you might say with some of his rhetoric, being quite loyal to President Trump, uh, the, the level of Roman Catholic uh, faith in the Hispanic community, perhaps an ingredient ingredient for the rebirth well, the of social conservatism. Are these things that might challenge well, the Buchanan factors. notion? This is why Texas is not like California, though demographically it's almost exactly like California, is the religion, the evangelicals mainly down there, but also some of the Hispanics are more Catholic than they are in California. And they're voting, they're willing to vote Republican. You know, well, yeah, but I mean, 70% of Hispanics vote in every presidential election for the Democratic candidate, just like 70% of, uh, of Asian Americans do, and 90% of African Americans vote Democratic presidential elections. And that is something that future Republican candidates yeah. are going to have to grapple with yeah, demographically. Uh, Eventually. It is a, it's, a, it's a last hurrah for the white See, there's people a little in bit. this country. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It's for the kind of America that you recall, uh, that's not coming well, back, say, and, and, let's, and let's it has to America do with the loss again. of power uh, yeah. in white America. But let's make America European great America. again. That's to, that message is out there to the people. Remember the country you grew okay. up in? That's yeah. what it's okay. all about. I, I'm, I'm yeah. ending it with the simple fact <laughs> yeah. that America was, is, and will remain great. Thank you, sir. Right. <laughs>